everybody. I gotta tell you a quick story that I sort of remembered uh, when I was back east. That happened to me when I was a boy. Um, my sister and I had bought a pony together and I'm pretty sure that dad and mom probably helped us a little bit. Uh, the way we made our money back then, before I started trapping, is we'd go to the neighbors and pick blueberries. They had big blueberry patches and they passed like a nickel for a quart of blueberries. And so we'd, we'd pick blueberries and we got paid for that. We saved our money. We bought this little pony and a saddle and bridle. And uh, she was a pretty good pony. I was eight years old, I think. Anyway, um, after we had her a couple of years and she contacted what we now call Eastern encephalitis, but we called it sleeping sickness back then. Uh, the old timers called it the blind staggers. The horse would get a real high fever. It was mosquito borne illness. <clears throat> now we vaccinate for it, of course. But uh, I don't think we knew about the vaccines, even if there, were, if there even was one. Anyhow, um, after a couple of days of her being really sick, um, we had to put her down. She got to where she couldn't get up anymore. Real high fever. Um, we knew that putting her down was the right thing, so we did. And uh, we drug her back to the back of Dad's property, and, and him and I took a couple of shovels and started digging a hole. My little brothers went along. They were there. And uh, we dug this, this hole for the pony. and. And I was going to be tough. I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to show how wiped out I was by this. This thing that happened. And I think I was nine then. Anyway, uh, we we roll her into the the grave and we're shoveling the dirt clods back onto her, covering her up. And I was fighting it, man. And my dad, he just finally looked at me, stopped and looked at me, and he said, "Norm," he said, "If you just." Go ahead and let it out. He said, you'll feel so much better. Boy, that was that was all it took. It was like a dam broke. Of course, I was bawling and snot flying. And, uh, but he was right. It, uh, it did, it, it did make me feel better to, to let it out. And it seemed like the end of my cowboy dreams to me. Um, what was I going to do with my little saddle and all the stuff I had, you know, little bridle, all my little dreams. But um, since then, I I know I've owned over a hundred horses. I believe I've ridden over a thousand colts. I know I have an old saddle, my old, my first custom saddle. I know it's been on six hundred colts. And uh, so what seemed like the end of a dream was just the beginning, it was just a stepping stone. And uh, so any of you young folks out there that, that, that think your life is over because something happens, it's not the end, it's just the beginning. So just keep up your courage. A lot of times we lose a family member or a good friend to death, to cancer or something. And uh, those of us who live by faith, we believe it's just the beginning, it's not the end. So, can you imagine if, if what we go through in this life is just the beginning, what, uh, what the end must look like, uh, what the fulfillment of that dream might be. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening. I hope everybody has a good Sunday, and uh, God bless you. Love you all. Thanks for listening again.